uh, like the third life night. I'm so excited that y'all are here. Oh yeah, welcome to the third life night. That's what I want to hear. Y'all are just the best youth group ever. Um, literally, awesome. So tonight we're going to be talking about Jesus. Oh, so smart, so smart, so smart. So, if you don't, a lot of you know me at different levels, different varying levels about things that have happened in my life or whatever. Um, if you asked my, my mom or, which she's usually here, but she's not here tonight. Um, if you asked my mom what, what was like the characteristic trait that made up myself when I was a little tight, it would be that I was, out of the three kids, I was the rule follower. I was the one who like, uh, I mean, don't put your hand on the stove. Okay, I won't, because I don't want to get burned. That's logical. Thanks, Mom, for that advice. Um, don't talk to strangers, so I would naturally stay away from the 15 passenger white vans with no windows on them. And I would stay away from here, want some can all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I would, I would just, I would blindly believe pretty much anything uh, my parents told me because I thought that they were, they knew everything. It was the weirdest thing, and I don't know if we had this moment, but uh, when I was, when I graduated high school, I remember going around a walk, uh, a walk with my dad, and he told me like his whole life story, like everything, and just just about how he grew up, what his family life was like, all this stuff, and I had heard bits and pieces, but it was the first time that I heard like who he was and the two realization or the one biggest realization that I had was when I got back I was like oh my parents are people huh. and it's like a crazy realization that like oh I mean they I mean they make mistakes they're not perfect um, they're I mean I have awesome parents but I realized their, their humanity and all that kind of stuff and it, it was really really neat it was a really cool experience for me um, but I was also I would blindly believe anything they said um, for instance, my mom, uh, I loved bubble baths. Who growing up loved bubble baths? All right, awesome. Weird question, I know. Get over it. Um, I love bubble baths so much, and I could not get enough. I couldn't be in there long enough. I mean, just me and Rubber Ducky, I was happy. I would, I would be the one. Have you ever like made like Santa Claus beard with the with the bubbles, all that kind of stuff? It was the cool thing to do. Uh, my mom naturally got kind of annoyed after a while. She's like, "How do I get him out?" Because I would refuse. And so she told me, she was like, "Jonathan, I got to tell you something. I don't want you to." freak out but if you stay in the bathtub too long you know how like, your hands get wrinkly you know like the you know how it happens she convinced me that I would literally turn into a raisin and so and so anytime from then on up to today when I am in my bath and I look and my hands start wrinkling I freak out I'm like oh gosh I do not want to be a dehydrated grape this is not cool so I believe anything and but so when it comes to when it comes to like my faith and everything like that, I, like I said last week, I was raised Catholic. I, I believe the faith, all this kind of stuff. But naturally, as I got older, I started asking more questions. And the great thing is, is questions are good, especially about faith. And the most important question, which we're going to be talking about tonight, is, is the question of who Jesus is. And see, the really, really like neat thing about um, Jesus is there's a lot of things that he says. A lot of people say he is a prophet. He's a good teacher. He's a really, really good guy. Um, but here's, here's the thing. Is I, for me, I believed what I was told about Jesus, about who he was. And I was lucky enough, I was blessed enough to have parents who I, I know to be true what they taught me um, through learning that, through talking, about it my, through talking through it myself. But a lot of people, and this is the problem today, people limit Jesus to one of these three things. Either a prophet, a good teacher, or just a really good guy. Um, and why, why is that a problem? That's good. I'm glad Jesus is a really good guy. He was a really good guy. He was a good teacher. He was a prophet. Even, but here's the thing. That's, that's not all he claimed to be. And this is a, this is a problem. Because when you think about it, most people, a lot of people might argue, or some people might argue, Wrongly, that did Jesus even really exist? See, that's not the problem is knowing whether or not Jesus existed. Because the man Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth existed, it's a, it's a historically accurate fact, not just from Scripture, from, but from sources outside of Scripture, people who weren't even Christian or Jewish, they accounted for this man named Jesus of Nazareth. So the fact that he existed is really not a question. 
And we see from his teachings that, yeah, he seemed to be maybe a prophet. He seemed to be like a decent person. He seemed to be like he taught different things. Even Muhammad, the person who started the faith of Islam, recognized Jesus as a really good prophet. As a, he, he recognized him as such. But so what makes us different from Muhammad? And this is the big problem. This is the big question. Who did Jesus say that he was? See, the thing about Jesus is that he said he was these things. But was Jesus actually God? See, this is the biggest claim that we have to talk about. Because Jesus, he was all of these things, he, but he, he claimed to be God. And this is a problem that, that C.S. Lewis, ta- you've heard of Chronicles of Narnia, all that kind of stuff. The guy who wrote that was also this great philosopher. And one of the things that he said that a lot of people will just accept Jesus as a good teacher. But how could Jesus be a good teacher when, if he wasn't really God, but claimed he was? That makes him either, two things we're going to talk about, either a crazy man, a lunatic, or a, a bold-faced liar. Now, what good teacher could actually um, also claim that he was something that he's not? And so, we might just pass it off of, oh yeah, it's okay that he's a good person or a good teacher, but it's not okay to stop there. Because if we stop there, we put our faith in someone that we're not sure is being an honest person. And that doesn't seem like a good teacher to me, a good prophet, a good person, someone who would lie. And this is what what C.S. Lewis says. He said, a man who was merely a man and said that the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. We would either be, he would either be a lunatic on the level with a man who says he is a poached egg, C.S. Lewis is an example, not mine, or else he would be the devil of hell himself. Wow, Jesus, the devil of hell himself. That's a pretty big deal. Because what happens is, it, when we take, and this is what C.S. Lewis talked about, Jesus is either one of three things. He can't just be a good teacher. He can't just be a good guy. He's either Lord as he claims he is. He is either a lunatic, a crazy man, who thinks he is something that he's not. He might think he's God, but he's not. That makes him a crazy man, a lunatic. Or he knew exactly who he was, but claimed to be somebody else, and that makes him a liar. Now, when it comes to us coming to life tonight, or Mass, or living our faith in our lives, we should be very, like, if we don't get this, then we're not really living our faith out of a firm belief in who Jesus is. Now, who did Jesus say he was? Jesus said that he was God, as we talked about. This is what he said in the Gospel of John. So, he said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am. Now, why is this a big deal? Where, where have we heard the name I am before? Does anybody know? Who called himself I am? Is that Chris back there? Yell it out. God, Yeah, God, Yahweh. The, when when uh, God spoke to Moses, Moses said, Lord, uh, God, tell me your name. Tell me what your name is. And he replied, I am who am. So way back in the Old Testament, when God first revealed himself, he revealed himself as I am. And so you have Jesus who comes on the scene after thousands of years, who when he appears, John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Follow him. He's the Messiah. He's the chosen one. And then he says, Jesus himself said that before, uh, when you realize that I am, he says that I am. He says that I, I am God. And that's a pretty big claim to make if you're not really God. And so we have to look. Was Jesus, did he really think he was God and was God? Did Jesus think he was God but really wasn't? He was just a crazy man? Or did Jesus trick us all? For 2,000 years or more. And is he lying to us? This is the question that I want to challenge us to ask tonight. Because if we don't ask this, then we start to wonder, we, we, our faith isn't really founded on anything. Because the center of our faith is who? Jesus, right? We have to know who he is in order to really worship him for who he really is. So, I want to talk about these things. The first one, uh, the first one is, is lunatic. So, 
Jesus was a crazy man. This is, this is one of the claims that you could say, and that's okay. So if he was a lunatic, he was a crazy man, he was saying that, I really think I'm God, but he's just a person, and he's just, like C.S. Lewis said, a person who calls himself a poached egg, or a person who wants to marry a bridge in France, which really happened. Um, anyway, um, so is he, is he a lunatic? Now the thing with, with lunatics, so what are characteristics of, of people who are good teachers, all that kind of stuff? A lot of times they have people who follow them, who listen to him, who, who learn from him. And we see this especially with Jesus. I mean, he had thousands of people that he reportedly did a miracle that fed all of them with just five loaves and two fishes. These people were to hear his message because they heard great things about him, miracles that he did and all this kind of stuff. Now, does this make him automatically not a crazy man? No, just because he had a big following of people doesn't mean that that makes him God because he says he is. Now, I don't want to say that because if you look at history, there's other people that I would call crazy that a lot of people followed. I mean, one example I think of is, is Hitler. He took over an entire country and started to almost take over an entire world by his, I think, crazy ideas. And he caused a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, caused a lot of suffering, and so many that are suffering even today from that. Now, just because he had a good following doesn't automatically make Hitler a lunatic. I think he was crazy. But what about Jesus? You see, Jesus, he, he, uh, he taught, we could say, okay, he taught good things. What did he teach? What came out of it? One of the things that Jesus said is that you will know a tree by its fruit. So out of Jesus' teaching, you see uh, his two main commandments, love God and love one another. Something that if you look in your own heart and you ask, what is the thing that I want more than anything? Is to love. We all want to be loved. Now, okay, what is the thing that I want to give more than anything? We are wired to say, I want to give myself. I want to love others. Jesus came and taught this to us. And his good teaching, the fruit of that, is you have thousands and thousands of uh, millions of saints who lived as Jesus taught and did incredible things. Now, this doesn't automatically make him God, but I think it's safe to say that it's kind of, it doesn't really make sense to say Jesus is a lunatic. So, the other two questions we have to ask is that, is he a liar? Now, why is it so shocking that the Jews, why he said, I am, that I am God? Now, there's two kind of ways to look at who God is. There's, there's two different beliefs. There's, there's the pantheist view of God, which say that, that Jesus, or they say that God is just the universe. The universe is God. And that all of us have some form, all of us are part of God, in a sense. But see, that would be impossible for what Jesus is claiming. Because Jesus was raised in a Jewish culture that said that their belief in God was that there was somebody infinitely different than anything else. Infinitely greater. He was the creator. And that's who Jesus claimed to be. So, is he lying about this? He's saying he was different than anybody else because he himself was God. Now, when I think about, is Jesus, Jesus a liar? This is what, this is what I wonder. How is he a liar? It doesn't make sense that a liar would do what Jesus did. He taught good things. Um, he taught that to love one another. And, and the, the Pharisees said that I am God. And when, when he said that I am God, one of the things that the Pharisees did is when they were listening to him, the Pharisees are like the teaching Jews, the rabbis, all that kind of stuff. The Pharisees started to pick up rocks to stone him to death for claiming what he was claiming. Now, it doesn't make sense to me that Jesus would call himself God and lie about it, even at the threat of death. Usually people lie to get something. If you've ever lied, um, maybe when you were little, um, about the time that you hit that baseball through your neighbor's window, um, which cost you $200 and it was really expensive and you had to save up all your allowance. Uh, if you lied about that to get out of it, you did that to get something or to not get in trouble. You don't lie to get killed. It doesn't make sense. Uh, but this doesn't necessarily make God God. It doesn't make him not a liar. So what exactly makes him Lord? What makes God God? What makes Jesus actually God? 
There is one great mystery in history that can answer that question. There's only one great mystery in history that can answer the question of was Jesus actually God? And this is the question that opens us up. Did Jesus rise from the dead? Did Jesus rise from the dead? This is history's greatest mystery. Why is that? Now, if Jesus, there's no man, no person that can resurrect himself. There's no man or person that can say that I, I can lay down my life and take it back up again, as, he, as, John, as uh, Jesus did in the Gospel of John. Before he even was crucified and died for what he claimed to be, as the Jews thought he was blaspheming, he said, I have the power to lay down my life and to pick it back up again. He already ma started making claims that he could raise himself from the dead. Only God can do that. There's not one of us in here, as much as we might try, that could accomplish a resurrection, a real, not fake or feigned anything, resurrection. So, how do we know that the resurrection is actually real? How do we know that Jesus was not a liar, not a lunatic, not a lord? Um, the first thing I want to look at is there's different arguments that, that Jesus faked his death. And it said, like, on the cross he faked his, his, his crucifixion. It happened. He was nailed to a tree. That's an historical fact, not just in the Bible, but outside of it. It records, uh, an historian it records that there was a man named Jesus of Nazareth that was crucified. And people might argue, they'll say, oh, you know what? He faked his death. Or somehow he just, he was, he just feigned it and people actually thought he died, but he didn't really. That's a little hard for me to believe in my own life because if you look at it, two things. What was a crucifixion? A crucifixion was an execution that happened by trained executioners. The Romans were experts at killing people by crucifixion. This was how they tortured and punished people who were criminals. They did this, these people who crucified Jesus did it for a living. They knew exactly what they were doing. They beat Jesus almost to the point of death even before he carried his cross to Calvary. And not only that, when he was nailed to the tree and he said, uh, Father, into your hands I commend, commend my spirit and he breathed his last, he died. That's what it says in scriptures. But just to make sure what happened, the centurions, last week we talked about that centurion that had the conversion. How did he have his conversion? To make sure that Jesus was dead, he stuck a lance and shoved it into Jesus' side, which we don't really think about. What does that mean? His side. And so it went through his side and it pierced his heart. To make sure Jesus was already dead. And um, there's like, if you want to look it up, it's, it's really interesting. Like it, it even says that blood and water came forth. And that's really a symptom of somebody who was already dead. That both blood and water came from their heart. Um, so that, that doesn't really make sense that Jesus drives from the dead. Because even in the scriptures it says, oh, after Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to people in his glorified body. Now I don't know about you, but after, I can't imagine somebody who was just tortured, beaten, almost to death, and then nailed to a tree. If he magically or survived this event, it doesn't make sense that he would, people would say that he came in his glorified body. That Jesus looked awesome. He probably wouldn't have been looking very great if he had just came down of a cross and said, hey, I rose from the dead. Doesn't line up. What's the next one? And the next one that I wonder is, is so he, Jesus, did he rise from the dead? After Jesus rose from the dead, he even says, St. Paul says in the Corinthians, that he appeared to almost 500 people at once. And then while he was on earth until he ascended into heaven, he appeared many times to, to his disciples, to Peter, to James, to John, to Mary Magdalene at the tomb. There's all of these accounts of Jesus appearing from the dead. And so people might say, okay, are you, they were just all hallucinating. Now it doesn't make sense to me why hundreds and hundreds of people would hallucinate not just something similar, but the same thing. 
the glorified body of Jesus Christ walking and breathing. So much so that when Thomas said, I don't believe until I put my finger in his side, Jesus shows up and Thomas takes and puts his finger into the womb that pierced the heart of Jesus. How does it make sense that this would happen if it was a hallucination? It makes more sense to say that this actually did happen. And then the other thing, okay, what if, what if, what if Jesus did die? What if he was buried in a tomb? But what if his apostles, who were so distressed because they followed this man for three years, did something unspeakable and stole Jesus' body and just hid it? That's another one of the things that people say. Now, I like this picture. You can't really uh, you tell from here. But each around these are, are the 12 or 11 apostles showing the ways that they had died. So what happened after the resurrection? They said that Jesus appeared to them. It appeared to hundreds of other people. And then after that, they spent their entire lives preaching this message. Not just to the Jews, but to the whole world. St. James went all the way to Spain. Paul went all the way to Greece. All these, they spread out into the whole world to give their entire life to preach the message of the resurrection. Now that already seems crazy that a liar would do that and give his whole life to do that. So people say, well, the apostles just lied. Well, these pictures show the death of the apostles, who were all but John, martyred, killed for the belief that Jesus rose from the dead. Some, like St. Peter, were hung upside down and crucified because they didn't, he didn't feel like he was worthy enough to be killed in the same way that Jesus was. Some, like Bar Bartholomew, were skinned alive. Or even St. John, who didn't actually die, um, was attempted, somebody attempted to kill him by boiling him in water. Like, it doesn't make sense that liars would do this for a false message. And so when it comes down to the question, is Jesus really God? I want you to ask yourselves, what do you think? Is Jesus a lunatic, a crazy man, including all of his apostles? Or was he a liar and his apostles along with him? Or was he actually Lord? And if we ask this question, this is what you have to do. C.S. Lewis says you must make your choice. You can shut, up, shut him up for a fool, a lunatic. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon because he lied. Or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. This is something that none of uh, that myself or your core members or your parents can't decide for you. But I want you to use the mind and the reason that God gave you so he can speak to your heart and say not only is he Lord and God, but he came down to earth like we're going to talk about next week. He came down to earth to tell you that he loves you. And if that's true, that changes everything. Because if that's true, the fact that he's God, all his teachings make sense. All his teaching we're, we're obliged to follow because he is infinitely more wise, smarter, intelligent, all those things than us. And he knows what we're created for. Like St. Augustine says, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until we rest in you. So what happens now? If we look at the fact that Jesus is God, then we have to look at our lives different. Because we are, we are Christians. We are followers of Christ. We believe that Jesus Christ is God. And so we give our whole lives to Him, like the apostles did. And from my own experience, I can say that if we do this, it will be a challenging journey. But it will be the most worth it journey ever. I do all of this, and your core members are here, your parents are here to raise you in the faith, because we want to give everything that we have received from him to you. We know that it's a life worth living, a life that is sometimes difficult, but a life that we start to become who we were created to be. So let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to reveal himself to us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, you claim that you are the great I Am, God with us, Emmanuel. Do not just speak to our minds and our reason to see that this is logical or true, but Lord, I ask that you convert our hearts. Take our doubts, our fears, our insecurities, our anxieties, and cast them upon the wood of your cross, Jesus, so that taking them in your death, you may bring new life to us by your resurrection. 
We thank you, Jesus, for coming to earth and for telling us that you love us through every action, through life, through death, and through rising again. In your name we pray. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.